Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Neil with Portal to Ascension. Thank you all so very, very much for being with us today. We're going to have a great presentation. Uh, just out of curiosity, who that is joining us right now has not been a part of any Portal to Ascension event ever? If not, put the number one in the chat room. I'm always curious to know how many people are newbies and um, not attended anything. Okay, we have a couple. Nice, awesome. So um, again, my name is Neil. I'm the founder of an organization called Portal to Ascension. We're basically a conscious event production organization where we create over, at this point, over 100 events a year. 80% um, of them are online. The other 20% are all over the world. Uh, we have one coming up in Atlanta, Austin, Sedona. So we do many, many events. But all things basically that help assist in the evolution of consciousness, shifting our frequency to this reality that we know is possible and whatever is within that, whether it's extraterrestrials, our true world history, spirituality, sacred sexuality, we cover those topics. Started around 10 years ago now and um, been picking up momentum for the last six years. We've been online as well as doing the live events and really cultivated this, this online webinar university that you're now a part of. We have, for example, we have another webinar tomorrow. We have two next week. So we're always creating content for the shift in consciousness. So today we're gonna to have a webinar with Celestine Star, but just really quick, a couple of logistical items here about the webinar platform. If you're chatting and your settings are on all panelists, that means only Celestine and myself, but Celestine's gonna be presenting, so she won't be able to see it, but pretty much only myself will be able to see what you're saying. So if you wanna engage with other people in the room, please change right above the chat box, right down there, please change to all panelists and attendees so that you can engage everyone and highly encourage engagement because it's fun. You guys are all over the world. We're here together and we get to share love and wisdom with people from all over the planet. And so please do that. Now, if you have a question, do not ask it in the chat area. Please go to the Q&A button, which is at the bottom of the Zoom room. Type in your question there. And I believe Lynn Ann, let's see, make sure. Yep, Lynn Ann is going to be um, helping Celestine out today and she'll be helping moderate the questions towards the end if and when she has time for that. And Celestine, just real quick, let you know, you can go over. So if you want to take those questions, you can, but please ask them there. Cause if you ask your questions in the chat room, the question, the chat's going so fast, we won't be able to see it. Now your replay, you're going to get to have unlimited replay access to this webinar, which will be sent to you probably by the end of the day tomorrow. You get to watch it on our back end on our platform. And there's hundreds of other free presentations there. And a little side note, we're upgrading our website and we're re releasing an app that you can cast to your smart TV. So you're gonna be able to cast this to your smart TV within a month. We'll send you an email when the app's out. And, um, and you can also watch all the other footage on your smart TV too or on the, on the phone. Okay, so let's do this. Today we are doing, um, we're gonna be with Celestine Star on a webinar called Reintegration of Ultra Terrestrials with Earth and Humanity. And some of the questions that we're gonna be addressing today and exploring or who are we, why, who are we, why did we come? Did we make a commitment that still holds true today? Who are our star family? Once you reconnect with your own galactic lineage, your life can shift and you will understand more about yourself and your connection to the universe. And right now, especially I feel, you know, as the days and hours and months and weeks go by, this becomes more and more important, really connecting with who we are and what is actually going on, on this planet. And Celestine Star, a little bit about her. She's the founder director of Galactic Earth Council. Since 2010, she's been an ultra terrestrial and heaven, heavenly emissary for over 40 years, offering galactic wisdom and knowledge worldwide to private groups and individuals. She has been guided by the Heavenly High Spiritual Council as an ambassador to assist in the reintegration of Earth's humanity with our benevolent ultra terrestrial ancestors, Starkin. Star is the author of the Galactic Earth Council book, offering a safe and well lit roadmap for those being called to awaken to the galactic origins. Hundreds of people have experienced stars, guided sacred skywatch circles, galactic star origin and celestial ascension sessions and galactic ascension workshops. She is a sacred galactic wisdom keeper, grandmother, author, speaker, healer, holistic therapeutic practitioner and spiritual leader. Star's life purpose is to assist in the evolution of our earth and to keep way for sacred for all. And just a little bit about her in regards to our connection. Deborah Juicy, really good friend, connecting me with, with her, said she's one of the best Ascension teachers she's come across, really resonates with her. And Deborah is one of my really good friends. So I connected with Celestine just to kind of feel that out. If Deborah says she's good, she must be good. And I was definitely, um, uh, you know, not only impressed, but um, I resonate with all of her awareness and information that she brings forward. So today you're in for quite a treat. So let's go ahead and bring Celestine up.
Whenever you're ready, Celestine, you can unmute and start. Hey. I think you're still muted. That was go. wonderful. Oh, thank you. Blessings and hello from on high. <laughs> thank you, Celestine. I appreciate you so much. I'm really happy and that we're connected, you know, and your information, your interview that we did last a couple of weeks ago was amazing. So I'm extremely excited for what you have in store today. I am so excited. Um, the high council, the high spiritual council did not let me sleep last night. So they've been, you know, we have visitors from Lyra and we have the Andromedans and those from my lineage, Sirius. So mm, beautiful. it's, it's, it's going to be wonderful. All right. It's all yours. Thank you so much. Okay, so I want to greet everyone in particular and send out my love to all of you. And I begin usually with an invocation. And uh, so I will do that while I am before you. Kuranayushi. Na shir dama yura de jaramona he no ma de hora shindebu na veraram mojerdu in the highest light I bow to thee. All divine beings, I thank you for coming. May you receive all that you are seeking in this opening of the portal to ascension. May the heavenly emissaries, the high spiritual council, galactic star federation, and the star confederation Awaken in this moment, in this present moment, and help to guide this working through. And we bow deeply to the Radiant One for allowing us all to gather around the world in this most benevolent time. And so I shall begin <clears throat> with sharing a screen which will take us through a journey it is a journey of awakening, so take a moment and breathe. You may want to get a pencil and pen. <clears throat> Feel yourself sitting on your sit bones, comfortably relaxed, and give yourself permission to open to the energies that are being sent to us. There are cosmic energies that are coming in. There are frequencies that are being given to all of us to receive and they're like little gifts they open up they pop open and you have these amazing self-realizations so i asked in the highest that you shall receive all that you are seeking that this working be a benefit for all sentient beings and for the all may this working be for all time and the highest good blessed be so I'll take a moment and I'm going to begin my PowerPoint. So welcome to Portals to Ascension. This presentation is about the reintegration of ultra terrestrials with Earth and humanity. What you have before you is a design that I've been requested by the High Spiritual Council. And when I speak about the High Spiritual Council, there are, it is an intelligence, a grouping of intelligence that does not necessarily have a physical embodiment. They are the overseers of a sense to this whole galaxy. You hear me say the word galactic because we are children of the Milky Way, children of the Sheshita. If you want to say that, Sheshita. 
Milky Way. So they see us as one tone, one grouping, and Earth and our solar system is within that. They have been here since the very beginning. So we have the radiant one, we have the prima ultras, which would be the right hand of creation. And then we have the high spiritual council. And their reach and their intelligence is throughout all creation and all dimensions. We are blessed to have this connection and I just honor them. They have proven themselves time and time again to be of the highest benevolent energy. So they have presented here a, they have requested that I present this hyperspatial star cube. And I've often taken it to the Skywatch and we give it out to all of the Galactic Earth Council members who are with me at Skywatch and we gaze upon it. And what it, it does is it begins to activate the brain circuitry. Part of the work that's been happening through the Galactic Star Federation and the the High Spiritual Council is to help to activate the brain circuitry, the, the uh, neuron, the neurological base that enables us to have functioning in a higher dimensional field. So as you gaze upon this, and I'm gonna play some intonations of sounds for you to take a breath and allow yourself to shift, you'll notice your eyes may move from line to line, point to point. And just take a moment to awaken yourself. Give yourself permission to listen and to hear and to feel and to know. And to invite your higher self to become present. I want to invite that part of you that comes from a different place a different galaxy before you came to Earth. Notice when the eyes shift from one form to another. This is the movement of the wave pattern, the wave energy within you catching these movements. From point to point is the vector. So this is a vectorious design. And now we move forward. Glory in the light of the Radiant One. Glory in the light of the Radiant One. Glory in the light of the Radiant One. And we chant this, it is a mantra that if you come in contact with higher intelligence and you say glory in the light of the Radiant One, it is a greeting. But it also lets you know, lets them know that you're an awakened being and that you're ready to make contact. And so they have permission from the higher realms and they work directly with the Radiant One. The Radiant One is their God, source, creator. And so yes, there is not a religion, but a respect. They respect that each and every particle that has been created in all of this particular Radiant One's universe, universal beingness of existence, has an expression and a function. They call that the formation of relations. And so because their, their heart is devoted, they are in devotional service, devotional awareness, in a natural state of being. They have respect for all life. And I think this is a, a teaching that I'm gonna be speaking on as the days to come. I am Aisha, Celestine Aisha Starr, and I will be your guide on this journey and um, into the world of the star nations. And I was born into metaphysical uh, families. These guides and teachers that I've had since I was born were masterful in interdimensional relationships uh, with this dimension and other dimensions in a natural formation of how to manifest, how to work with the intelligences of elements, of rocks, of 
fire, earth, air, and then moving onward. And I'll talk a little bit more about myself, but I'm here to assist in the facilitation of Earth's galactic ascension. I'm so, so excited about that. I'm also author of this book, The Galactic Earth Council, Reintegration of the Earthkin and Starkin. And I just have to do this once, just put it through because you see it goes, it's really in the spaces. So I had to just do that one time. Um, the Galactic Earth Council book is co-authored. It is not only a memoir of my life, my 40 years, 50, I'm you know, moving through 66 years on this planet circling around the sun, but it also speaks into the Galactic Earth Council that has come with me. We formed this council on July the 11th, 2010. We have been together for 10 years and we have had direct communication and relationships with these ultra terrestrial beings. And I say ultra terrestrial because we're on earth and they were present with us. And what I found in my walk with the ultra terrestrials, the immortals and heavenly emissaries is that there are groupings that live here on earth and they prefer to be called ultra terrestrials. There's a difference between alien ETs and ultra terrestrials. Those of us who live on earth are ultra terrestrials. They see us as galactic consciousness embodied in the Earth's signature body. And so this book, The Galactic Earth Council, is a roadmap. It's a research book for those who are interested. And we had a transmission uh, from, it was an energetic transmission where they, they gave me information and I typed out the encodex and it's quite lengthy, but it's the history of Earth from the viewpoint of the ultra terrestrials. It's very exciting. Um, it's been edited by a university professor and it has been acknowledged by a NASA engineer who found it quite interesting and is doing research with it at this time. So I would suggest that you might want to consider getting your copy. We will be reading from the book today at times, and so let us continue on. And I want to keep track of my timing. So here we are. The, 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 I want to acknowledge the advanced Galactic Earth Council members who contributed to the book as well. Their writings are there. You can see the wide range of experiences. No one was abducted. We hold our sky, our sky watches in sacred union. My Native American, I'm Croatan, um, Iroquois, raised among the Hopi, the Apache, the Arapaho, the Navajo, and have been in council circles and in um, the keeper of the medicine room. And so when I stepped into this platform of the Galactic Earth Council, I felt it was important that we uh, come together as a council in a sacred way, because my work is very, very sacred. So I wanna acknowledge some of the staunch uh, members who have been out with me for 10 years. There's our Deborah Juicy. I love you, Deborah. And we have uh, Phoenix and Bakta. I have my beautiful, beautiful uh, Shadad and um, Chelsea. We have Perry, who's on here today. There's Michael Olson. He is our belated beloved. And so there's many. So we say, you know, glory in the light of the radiant one. And you can see the smiles and everyone is excited. And we're all just elated. By the time we walk down the mountain, after spending a night with our galactic uh, relatives, we are beyond belief, and it continues in their life. This is heaven also with the hands raised with me. And as we continue, you can see the meetings along the way. This is from 2010 to 2020. We will be celebrating in July the 11th, 10 years. Now, each of our meetings have a theme, 
and uh, they have a focus and each person brings their information to the circle. Um, I do new, new people, you know, are initiated and brought forth and the galactics take their time to open each person in a way that they can feel the love flowing. They're so excited. They, they often say, you know, you're so brave because you went into this human existence and we are spiritualizing and awakening the human consciousness in evolving them. And we've come to the point, we are at the point in which we can rejoin the galactic family. So that's what I'm here about. I'm so excited. I want to thank my star family, my personal family for their total support through the years. Their noni grandmother, she's a little bit out of space, but they love me. So I want to thank them. I want to thank Neil. Thank you, Neil Gar and your team, Portal to Ascension, for having me come and speak today. We have Claudette Bowden. She does production management. She comes in and makes me beautiful for all of you. So I really want to appreciate her. And Lynn Ann King, who's on today, and she's helping with the chat room. And uh, she's also a member of the Galactic Earth Council. So we have our members. And uh, just want to thank all of the Galactic Earth Council members who are on the call today. Yes, we are moving forward. And it just keeps getting better. To all of you coming to our presentation, I bow in deep thanks. So we're going to move now to a little more heartfelt. Here we go. I want to introduce you to the High Spiritual Council and the Galactic Star Federation. Take a moment and breathe it in. Their presence, their energy. This is a picture that I took with my own camera, Nikon. And what was happening was we were having a sky watch and you could see it's in the middle of the day. It was kind of dusk. They like to start at dusk. And they decided one day to not only create tremendous cloud energies, there, there's, a, there's an interface between the radiant one, which is with nature forces moving around, and the high spiritual council. So you have that. They decided to trace out the silhouette of San Francisco while everyone was watching, especially a doctor, he decided. Um, he, he just couldn't believe. It was really wonderful to have those who are non-believers and show me and all of this, but gently and with great humor and love, he was looking at San Francisco to the south. They drew it right before him what he was thinking in his mind as he was looking at San Francisco and they had all these other, we had a Lotus that day. They had Lotuses and Buddhas and it was a day of clouds and formations and beauty and grace. And finally he had to say, you know, I don't know what this is, but it is beyond what I know. And that was the glory. So here you have, the High Spiritual Council and the Galactic Star Federation before you. Take one moment. So my intent is, as Neil spoke about, to tell you a little bit about my life. Uh, humanity is evolving out of high conscious, the high density consciousness, the dawning of a new day on earth, a new era, not the new world. That's not happening. And all roads lead to the unified field, yes? Earth's rising frequencies and septicles in adjacent dimensional fields. That's a very interesting subject. And advanced technologies, cosmic understandings, knowing your galactic origins, earthly and cosmic mission, understanding the ultra-terrestrial starkin. They never left. Very important. And the high illuminated beings and the reversed ones. We're gonna talk about the Simparat. I'll say it again, the Simparat is the divine plan of the Radiant One. And the High Spiritual Council and the Galactic Federation, and we now have recently um, the Star Confederation as Star Command. Now back in the 70s, 
excuse me, my notes just fell. Back in the 70s, um, excuse me, 70s, 80s, when I started trance channeling, I came in contact with the uh, star command, the star confederation. And uh, what's happening is they have come back into my field and are working on portals opening. If you notice, there is a lot of portals opening. And I give you a really sweet one. They guided me to the trees because there's a lot of mechanical things going on. And they're saying, get back on the land, walk up to a tree and touch it because the frequencies that the trees are receiving, they are receiving it as well. And their consciousness is evolving. So I said, okay, let me go try this. And I went out and I touched the trees, this beautiful Lebanon cedars in front of my yard. I felt the strength and the power. It was so much. The leaves are taking in this cosmic energy and down into the roots. They had things to say. And so there is a circle of eight Lebanon cedars, which made a portal opening. So I wanted to share that with you because you may just want to go out to nature and check that out. So we're going to talk a little bit about the reintegration process, the awakening, and remembering you are the children of the Sheshita, the Milky Way, born on earth, but you are the essence of the stars. So I want you to tune in to your intent. What are you seeking to know? Because what it is that you are seeking is what you will hear. The forces are moving through me, and your spirit is receiving exactly what it is that you are seeking. So take a breath and just tune in at this moment. And I think I'm going to stop my sharing just for a moment. Let's see if we can bring me back, or maybe I can switch it over, make myself larger. Let's see if we can do that. There I am. Okay. And there, I'll just be a little bit large. I am Aisha, and I start with Aisha because that is my serious name. I am the emanation of Neptis, twin sister of Isis. I am here to the Syrian gateway, and I have been here for thousands and thousands of years. This is my last walk among you. I will be there, but I am my last walk. In this lifetime, I have been across the river. I have been to the cities of light and to the places of beauty and illumination. It was my destiny. As I said, I was born into a metaphysical family of the highest degree, magic with a K. I studied and learned the metaphysics, esoteric astrology, the hermetics, the alchemy. It was spoon fed to me. I was groomed to become a priestess. And understanding how to move out of body into the astral planes to determine things and events that are happening around the world. This is what is occurring right now. There are many, many who have such strength and power, but they have been guided towards a lower path, which was not my path. I knew that I had come here for the elevation of consciousness. But I swore that I would learn the way it was the only mystery school that I could go to to be where I am today with you, galactic consciousness. At the age of six, I had the near-death experience. I moved into the light. Through the light, I was addressed by two blue beings, although there was other consciousness moving around. And as I moved to this place, I was shown my life, and I could see every time you blink your eyes, every time you say, yes, I love you, but no, I don't really love you. But yes, yes, that's fine. Every time 
and then I moved into the Godhead. As I moved into the Godhead, it cannot be spoken. Those that know don't say, and those that say don't know. So I want to just tell you that that has been with me my whole entire life. As I came back at six, every circuitry that was within me was open. The knowing was clear, radiant glory. Yes, there are other levels to our DNA secretry, circuitry, but it took me years to master it and I had to shut down portions of it to be among the humans, to be among you, because it was not acceptable. Even now we are called woo-woos, but in truth, those of us who have advanced, those of you who have taken the time to advance yourself, you are the ridge pole around which our human race as a species is evolving and becoming prepared for the veil is lifting. We need you. We need your wisdom. Your wisdom is needed. Holding the higher frequency at all cost, that is where it is. So I came back. And I lived my life kind of in hidden secrecy, you know, not really stepping out and trying to be, oh, I'm the channeler of this week. But I have respected deeply. And I moved into quantum science. I was an optician. I moved into neuroscience, uh, photonic light in the eyes. I had my practice. I moved into the high mountains, guided to a place where the ultra terrestrials live. How about that? Wow. I was, we lived in England for a while and I, I learned the, um, <clears throat> the way of uh, the ley lines. And so there I was in the deep forest, just, just searching out. And eventually I found the underground base. They, 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 they lived there. I was just, the whole town understood that there was a lot of UFO sightings, but they didn't quite get it, that, that they actually had what they call a septicle. Septicles were created at the early stages of Earth, <clears throat> and this is where everyone lived. All of the galactic intelligences lived. No one lived in what they call the greening area or Earth. So I learned from them. I sat at the feet. The immortals appeared to me. I spent more and more time in the forest, and I understand why Yogini spent more and more time in the forest. That is where the action was at, and they shared with me. And you'll see, we'll talk about it a little bit more. But there in <clears throat> New Mexico, where I really became trained with the Native American, there was the atomic bomb testing. And I want to say this. This atomic bomb testing of our leaders blew open our matrix. The sky was ripped in half. I saw the dark side. There's no stars. And I saw the normal sky. This lasted for weeks and weeks. And there are people that have experienced that. I know there is. And eventually they may come forward to speak. And in this, the huge ships would come through. And as we're on the freeway, the big Studebakers and the Fords would stop moving. Everybody gets out, look at the ship, ah, and then it would be on its way. They came to find out what was going on here. We let them in. They had to come. We were feeding our children DDT, opiates in our cough syrup, cocaine in our drinks. They brought the chemicals from World War II. We became the children of the chemical age. But what it did was that it mutated our brains. It made us awake, aware. And so we began to become those who opened the doorways to better health, to more conscious living, and here we are today. So I just had to put that gemstone in there. So I've had contact for 40 years, and we could talk more, but we're going to take a look now. I'm going to shrink myself down, back down. I hope you, I don't know if you had to do it on your own, but I hope that was there for you to see. And here we go. So, moving up to the place of the Illuminated Ones and the High Spiritual Council, Galactic Earth, Galactic Star Council, um, we began to see the gateways, that people could go to the gateway, but they weren't quite ready to go through. 
and I've taken doctors, I've had starships come with us, we've gotten there, stargates open, I have images for you later, you get to see a real stargate. But for you right now, prepare yourself. Entering the gateless gate so that you may obtain galactic consciousness, I'm gonna move you from that place where you are. You can see the measure of where you need to go I'm sure all of you are far along there. And through my life, I'm going to show you little gateways that you can study things and places where your mind can go to evolve. And evolution is a given by the creator. Your first breath was connected to who you are, your function and your quality. And that is unfolding. But yet, as you awaken to who you are, you then have some movement in that because they call us star seed connections, the star seed. And we are star seed, we are human seed consciousness uh, becoming God self. So here we go. Your life journey into galactic consciousness. These are the gateways. Metaphysics. Cosmos, study the cosmos, galactic intelligence, supreme forces, and all existence. The Kemetic Egyptian studies. I have uh, Egyptian bloodline all the way back to Demonhor, Nubian, Kemetic. And so I got taught many of these. But you can't go wrong in going into the Egyptian mysteries. They teach you about consciousness, quality and function, the cosmic principles. These are things that you know, even the Zohar Kabbalah, you know, the Eastern studies, Middle Eastern studies, they all will take you and evolve your consciousness. Esoteric mysticism, the divine laws and principles, the quantum sciences, arcane symbolism. And uh, I love William Henry. He takes you on the journey of that. And uh, symbolism is the language of spirit. As many of you know, in Egypt, they call it the netter, the netteru. And when you understand one symbol and you see it within all of creation, whatever it means in your heart, that is what is being spoken to you. And so symbolism of abstract dreams. So we can look at these different things. I could talk for many, many minutes on each one, but let us get through the esoteric arts and the ceremonial workings. And I'm gonna keep my notes here so that I can be with you. And here we go, I wanna keep up with my slides. Ah, yes, here we go. Okay, so astronomy, astrology, Keratology, geomancy, elements, mathematics, universal forces. The study of these things awaken your consciousness, genetic codes, physiology, sound, energy, frequencies. And this is the wave that's coming in now to understand sound, energy frequencies, because when you're dealing with reverse consciousness, that which is of the lower nature, it can, an antidote for that is to raise the frequency. So understanding, for instance, love is 144 beats per second. But what does that mean? The whole of creation is in, love is embedded. That frequency runs throughout all of creation. And so how do we tap into that? I love you. I love you. And sending that wave pattern, I love you. And allowing you to breathe that in, it is healing, it is uplifting, it is illuminating, it brings forth compassion. But understanding how to work with these tools of electromagnetic energies, we have the bio, we have the bio energy, electromagnetic energy regulator, the beamer, we have the Rife machine. There's different uh, electroceuticals they now call it, healing therapies. How about this arcane mysticism? And here I prescribe that you have someone who is of a high vibrational 
evolved consciousness to guide you. You do not want to walk into these areas and not really have a really true guide. And this is purposeful because this planetary system has now been influenced by those of not beneficial effect, reversed ones. They are our leaders and we are praying and I am holding the vision and I'm locking into the timeline. But we will call forth the leaders who are evolved in consciousness and prepared to work with these higher galactic intelligences to bring us forth into the new era. And so what we're seeing in this crisis, as we have in many crises, is that we need some really good leaders. It's not about the political parties. It's not about anything but your ability as an individual and as a group to envision the future and tell the universe. The universe is so pliant. It, it listens consistently to your deepest heart. And so we're seeing that things are manifesting a lot faster. And so spiritism is on the rise. I love it. This is my favorite ontology, nature of being and becoming, existence and reality, cosmology, humans' interrelationship with nature. Yes, I love it. Oh, I could be in the forest. It talks to me constantly. I was out there and I could feel the cosmic vibrations that the plants and the animals are able to speak clearly and test it out for yourself. My favorite of favorites, the great mystery. There was a time when it wasn't so much spirituality, but um, the temples were created to give understandings. And, you know, so you go to a specific temple to learn and to receive. Um, and so I'm, I'm attuned to sacred ritual, ceremony, meditation, mediumship, yes, Transmediumship is great, and you can discern the level of whoever's channeling before you, like a seal, heavenly angel, I love you. And to Renee and Anthony, they're doing amazing work with people. But to actually do out-of-body work and allow another spirit to come in to speak, you have to know that every word and breath that they are speaking is for the benefit of all. They do not veer from that. And that is when you know you have a true benevolent being. So understanding the world of spirit, understanding your path, because you will be before your creator. And a lot of people say, well, I'm an atheist. And I say to you, a rock cannot birth out of itself. No matter what you do, it does not have the, that level of beingness. So in order to birth a child, and we celebrate here in May, the joining of male and female and creating a child, the Amrita that drops in the womb of the woman, enabling her to have divine embodiment of the goddess. So we say to you, acknowledge that there is an intelligence and move forward. This is a hint. So we have sacred union and marriage, kundalini, hatha yoga, all these things. I have searched and it is proven that if your intent is there, you will find the glories of creation. So we have shamanism, the sacred worlds, the tribal councils, integration of nature, medicine wheel keepers. If you ever get a chance, do the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is the cosmos, and as you step upon it, it is your world, and you find the most amazing things about yourself. It is the teacher. So I was known as Golden Dove. I was called by the grandmothers. I was trained by an Arapaho medicine woman named Ruby Sky. She taught me how to stop crying and sit, not sitting still in the council room. So I learned how to become a medicine wheel keeper. And uh, I love her for this. I also walk with the Hopi Nation and in council room with them, with the eldest Hopi, Titus. Um, and so I just want to praise the 
nature world of the Native American and all the natives around the world. My Nubian, the Native Nubians, they carry the teachings. They are hidden. So I'm just going to take you quickly through again the near-death experience. These are ways of evolving consciousness, yes? Into the Godhead. Take a moment with that one. And those who've had near-death experience, I call it the death experience. Actually, you do. You would, you completely are taken away and out of the body, you know. Uh, the path is narrow when you come back. You have no doubt that everything that you do is of consequence. And most are leading amazing lives, sharing their love. So this is my brain. I, I looked at this picture. I said, oh, my God, this is my brain. Oh, my goddess my heart and my wisdom that I share with you. But we are not alone. We are not alone. I want to honor the entheogenic pathway to celestial realities. Yes, it is a pathway for many. And I'm loving that it is now being brought online for elders who are passing to take the journey with the Cabensis mushrooms and helping to open and give them the relief they need and the trust. There are other realms and they will be taken care of as they move through and transitioning. These, this journey gives us the multidimensional contact with our ancestors, past, present, and future. The divine awakening to self-realization. It is a, a gateway opening to the whole of creation, the cosmos, and other worlds, but it is not the end of ends. It is a gateway. And here we have Bale Sagrado, who gives us the understanding of how they learned about plants. I spoke to you as I walked out into the nature and the nature plants started speaking to me. Well, in some of these native settings, they, they take the medicine and it amplifies their ability to speak and to know uh, something is going on in the village and I've been down and I spent weeks with the Guatemalans and believe me the whole village gets involved even the children you know and they ask the questions of spirit you know what do we need to do what do we need to know so much respect it can be done in a respectful way and if if humanity were to just make a space just a little space for the spirituality the awakeness those who are in need to move and elevate themselves forward, the gifts that would come pouring out. And I honor each one of you for your medicine baskets. And here we have my beautiful friend, he calls himself Android Jones, but Andrew Jones. We come face to face with the ancestors. So the question to you now is, are you ready? You know, I could speak a lot about my own experience, and each time, you know, the first time I had an immortal appear to me, my body was shaking, and they were so patient. They just, you know, materialized out of, you know, in the forest meditating, and it took a moment, and Tai Li Po, he, he looked at me, and he just said, I am Tai Li Po, and I've come to speak with you. What a thrill. No medicine, just meditation, just heartfelt meditation. And I tell you, whether it's medicine or whatever you need, however, which way it needs to come to you, and you elevate yourself and you begin to connect, and I'm sure many of you are getting it in dream state, you're getting intuitional hits, and it's rising, and you're like, I'm becoming so sensitive. Yes, the energies are rising. And our siddhas, what the Tibetan calls our siddhas, our full potential is coming online. So yes, it's going to become even more powerful. Here we have my beloved friend, Alex Gray. And so it's what we do with the wisdom. Do we offer it in art, in art and writing and dance and song, putting it down? Because when those people view it, when you view these beautiful pieces of art, then it goes inward 
and you receive the transmission and then as it goes in it reflects outward in the things you do the places you go and how you share your life this is a commission per Ankh and it was commissioned by Michael and Diana Melchizedek. And we did this beautiful thing for the world and um, just wanted you to take it in. And it has a lot of my heart in it. This is one of my designs. And then again, the Temple of Light, a design that came through. So I made a pledge that I would leave my writings and my teachings for humanity. And here you have one of those for you. And we are here at the gateway of the Star Nations. It is an ultimate gateway. And in the writings that they gave us, the transmission in chapter 11, they speak about Earth being a place where beings would come from all over the galaxy to learn. Now, there was a time when everyone lived in the septicles. They didn't come into this third dimension except for like resources. They'd come in, get what they need, and leave. And eventually, Earth was colonized. We did go through a situation where the whole of the Milky Way, the Sheshita, moved into a sector of time and space that was a very low frequency. They call it the destructive period where the one continent broke up. There was a reverse of magnetic field. Uh, I think it was 400 uh, million years ago, something like this. It's in the book. And <clears throat> the reverse consciousness occurred. So what that looks like is generally most Galactic intelligence is unified. It has a unified consciousness of knowing the graciousness of the Radiant One and working through the Primas, the High Spiritual Council, the Star Confederations, and the Galactic Star Confederations. We, they would move from one uh, planetary system or star system uh, to another. So when the reverse consciousness happened, what occurs is that person becomes very selfish. It's a reverse consciousness, uh, self-centered, wanting to control, wanting to own, wanting to take over. So we have all these reverse consciousness people who are trying to and have been working diligently. This is a part of their expression. And what's interesting is the galactics love them. They see them as their brother and sister. They see all of us as kin. They call us the kin. I think there was a book written about that one time. But anyway, so the reversed consciousness occurred for the first time because they had done the, the colonization on planet Earth in the third dimension. And when the lower frequency came, the reverse consciousness happened throughout the whole of the Milky Way. So anything that was in a third dimensional frequency the reverse consciousness occurred. They took care, the Galactic Star Federation, the High Spiritual Council, to rescue. There was a whole rescue operation that went on for thousands of years, and some people could be healed, and some not. Some lost their embodiment, and they're just in psychic form, in intelligence form. And many of these Psychic intelligence, such as the ASEANs speak about the Argon, Archons, um, come in and influence. They cannot physically manifest, but they come in and they offer different modalities of consciousness. Uh, I, I will give you technology and, you know, other species that are of reverse consciousness that could not be helped have re-entered into our sphere and cracking open our world with atomic bomb blasting and nuclear has allowed for them to even more. So they've been working diligently, say, for you know, 50 years or so. I've seen it. I've been following it. And now they have pitched their last 
and the most powerful cast. They've pitched it. I don't even know what to say. A thought form. But it is for each one of you to say, they have no power in my life. It is my life. This is my world. And I create my world as I need. Find the timeline that takes you directly to the higher, to the place where you need to be. And I wanted to speak into this, that the only one who can take you on and off this planet is the creator. So any fear that you have within you is that fear of death. And that fear of death is a transformation to meet your maker. So what is it that you are really afraid of? Because the glory and the beauty and the radiance and the place of being, I cannot give words, but only just an emanation of breathing out and um, just saying, check in with yourself. If you're creating scenarios of fear and turbulence, and if you've taken the red pill, so know that it's time to move on. The glory is happening. The veil is dropping. I'm so glad you're here today. And let's see. I do want to say, you can read there my connection in 1960, Elmagardo, Lancaster. Ah, oh, yes. I have been in the Dragon's Den. My husband, Ernest Robert Hunt, was high security around the world. He had done two wars, and they gave him the security of Edwards Air Force Base. And there I was able to be taken before down into some of the lower parts of that base, something like 4,000, 4, 30, 43,000 miles. Anyway, I came place, face to face and saw reptilian. So I want to tell you that there are those of reverse consciousness that would put fear in your heart. And I know that people have been abducted. I have done many years when I was up in the mountains in the 80s, up in Middletown, and I had a practice, and I still do in helping people to go through the process, and I call it celestial activations. And those people who are abducted or taken for their eggs or, you know, the yeast came into the women to use it for the skin of the little grays, there was different formation, but each time when you really get down to it, Nothing can be done to you except for agreement. So my work has been, shall be, to help those of you who need, you can get in touch with me, and I'm going to later talk about it, go sessions to understand your galactic origins. Where did you come from before you came to Earth? Very detailed. It was given to me by the galactics in order to prepare you to go to Skywatch. But really, just to prepare you to be in the presence of the ultra-terrestrials, extraterrestrials, those of the high command. So when you go into the galactic awakening of the self, then you get the detailed understanding. You go back in time 10,500 years. Are you in your original form? And that is so fascinating. I mean, the details of that alone. And maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you were a scout. Maybe you were a meteor that hit the, hit the earth. Maybe you came from the astral belt <clears throat> and you went into the earth. And so we reverse engineer your life and we bring you back to the place of origin. There you understand how you came to earth. Did you come in a stargate? Did you come on a ship? Did you come, did you just appear because you have that ability? You find out your powers, your understanding, and you meet your original grouping. We look at your contracts and agreements, because as I said, nothing happens to you without agreement. I have found more people who have had association with orbs appearing, or, or they see a ship and a ship or something happens, and it's their own star kin appearing to wake them up. They planned it. I'm going to incarnate in this human body and it exactly may, you know, I need you to wake me up. Promise that? Yeah, we'll promise. We'll come and wake you up. We'll take you on the ship. How about that? So I've learned so much to look at each individual case in what is, quote, abduction. Sometimes they are not. 
the cattle mutilation, what is that all about? I can go into that, but I, I, I choose today is about you. And just to understand that there is workings with groupings of people who need these things to happen, who allow certain beings to participate within their life. And so I want to say to you to look at that. And if you're interested, you can have a go session, Galactic Origin or Celestial Activation. So I began light group meetings way back in the 80s and we gathered, we had so much information. It was all about everybody sitting and accepting each other. And so we had gone, you know, we pretty, pretty much everybody had agreed that there was more going on than what was given. We also met the Solar Cross and this was amazing. The Solar Cross was began by a gentleman who was in the CIA and he was out listening to the neighborhood talking and he was uh, approached by Ashtar Command. Eventually he went on a ship, he came back and he left the CIA and began the Solar Cross. So I had the pleasure of meeting them. And um, so there's these groupings all over the world. I just want to honor you all for all the work that you're doing uh, in interfacing with the star nations, important. So there you have it, a little bit about me, my life purpose to assist in the elevation of consciousness on earth in a sacred way. There I am, awakened consciousness. Yeah, I love it. I'm so glad to be awake. And I love all those at every level it's just who you are. So we look at the natural forces, celestial beings, ultra-terrestrials, star again, the angelic realms. And I have to say, you know, I, I believe all women are touched by the angelic realm when they conceive and when they have the child. And they are watched over by angelic beings and presence. Um, Archangel Michael appeared as a golden orb when I conceived my daughter, Lysandra. Michael. I named her the flower of Archangel Michael. And uh, the preciousness of that is with me. So we have angels and we have heavenly emissaries and we have, it's all multidimensional and the secret government. And as what I've been told is that they're not going to wipe wipe the world away and give us a brand new world so that we can live in. No, we must learn to work with the new frequency we must understand the new sciences that will enable us to modulate and bring consciousness online evolve and elevate evolve and elevate and as the frequencies increase they will come forward and meet us and uh, so we have awakened humanity unified cosmic consciousness and the councils and the confederations so here we go what's your story you might want to write that down maybe do a timeline see when did I awaken to this and that, ah, I've been on the trail the whole time. And I'm so happy that you're here. So all of humanity is on a life journey of evolution. And we are all evolving into galactic consciousness. And again, when I say galactic, think galaxy. We are in the galaxy. We've gone from child, you know, to parents, to uh, community, town, city, state, uh, you know, nation, uh, global, yeah? And now we're leaping off. We're going beyond solar system. Because when we do, as the veil drops, and literally I'm going to go into the science of what's happening there, we're in a whole new vibrational field. And that is why we're seeing more. Uh, they no longer have to cloak. This is it. Uh, we are in. We are in the nest. We are in a whole new vibrational frequency. So think where you are in the human evolution of consciousness. What's the work ahead of you? I want to write that down. You know, all this stuff about racism, superiority, you know, the galactic sea is as one species. We are seen as one species. And that's what we need to get to. Okay, humanity is, this is the signature form for Earth. 
and it has a tone. Earth has a tone within the whole of the Sheshita. That beautiful tone of Earth. And our Earth is a little scrambly in its intonation because of all this modulation of frequency of thought. And so as we awaken, we become recognizing we are one species as long as one child is starving, as long as there are no somebody without a home, you know, they do not see us as superiority. I'm sorry. They see us as a multi-colored, multi-functional. What is our quality and our function? Individually, we each are birthed into creation. You, as an individual, are indestructible. There is so much respect for that. It will continue. Your life will continue to unfold no matter if you're in this form or whatever form you're in. That is you. But yet you have a purpose. And so the galactics, say honor your purpose. The ultra terrestrials honor your purpose and your function. They put it together and that's really your, the best place for you. And so they teach us how to open the field, not to go get educated at a college but to understand your purpose and function and what do you need to lift you up and support you in that way i want to just put that on the platform and so we are seen as one species we are children of the sheshita who live upon the earth and they they asked me how do we see through those little teeny eyes you know they're very humorous they love to laugh so we are all awakening that we are one species. And as the veil drops, you'll see. We are going to depend on each other. We are going to need to depend. And I'm seeing it now in this crisis. You know, all around the world, they're dealing with the homeless. They're dealing with those without food. They're dealing with the children. They're, you know, it's, it's this um, mass awakening. So I'm very, very proud of humanity because we can step it up. And there are no borders. Look at us. I'm talking to the whole of creation. I'm talking to all of you out there around the world. As a species, we're experiencing galactic awakening. We are one species in the cosmos. So we're at the dawning of a new era. And this dawning is not the new world order. It is the new day. We are moving into a differential awakening. Earth is ascending into galactic hood. Keep that in mind. I want to begin to recognize this home of ours, the Milky Way. I want to begin by looking at this dark line that goes across the center of the Milky Way. That is called the Rift. And the Rift takes 20 years for Earth to go through. And notice the bottom and the top of the Milky Way. We literally do an ecliptic orbit from the lower part of the Milky Way to the upper part of the Milky Way. And I'm taking a moment because we have someone who's trying to get in and I'm hoping I can send this to them. Yeah. And 20 years it takes for them, for us, we do 298,000 years to do an eclipse from the bottom of the Milky Way above and around. So just think about that. The Mayans have the calendar of our ecliptic orbit um, from the bottom of the Milky Way just surfacing. So in 2013, on that morning, this is an image I created, we were dead center in the middle of the Milky Way. Now we're moving from the lower nature of the Milky Way to the upper nature of the Milky Way. The lower to the upper. So right there we have the change in magnetic field 
And as we passed through, it took 20 years, 2000, what was it, um, 1997 to 2017, to pass through the center. Now we're in the upper part of the Milky Way. Just that alone shifted our field. This was an image from uh, NASA. I thought this really explains a lot. And so imagine, as I said before, that Earth is traveling with the Milky Way. And there are sectors of time and space, and each one has an intelligence, and it has a vibrational frequency, function, and a quality. Our Milky Way has now moved into a sector of time and space, we are told, that has of a higher frequency. It has illuminated consciousness, and so therefore everything that we are in, imbued with is influenced through the sector of time and space. Know that the sun's wave patterns, its wave, its solar waves have weakened, and we are getting more cosmic energy. And I think the drawing here of this NASA Godard is very apropos. So we're getting more cosmic energy, literally. This is literally happening. And what I'm told is that the cosmic rays are so powerful, it's like looking at a, a Russian doll, you know, in, in, and you see the different circuit, one within the other, within the other. So our universe, our third dimension has dissolved. Now they take me out from time to time. I get to go out, they show me different things. It's a blessing and then I just have to sit with it because it keeps unfolding. So what they did was they showed me these layers of dimensional fields and each layer, like in this Russian doll, each layer, each, each circular formation, each dimensional field has uh, principles and laws, universal laws. And basically, it looks similar to this kind of uh, lots of photonic energy. So frequencies modulating and intersecting each other. And we have had this dimension adjacent to us in which the septicles and the vibrational infrastructures were made to help bring balance to the planet. And so I want to read to you now, let me see if I want to go to this slide. Yeah, I'm going to read to you now and let's see my glasses fell. A portion of the transmission, and I'll make this transmission available if you go to galacticearthcouncil.com. I, I do a newsletter and I'll make this transmission available to everyone. And If Neil uh, wants to post it, I'll make sure to give it to him. This was a transmission um, which they took me out to show me um, on March the 31st, 2020. I'm going to begin... Your earth is made up of multidimensional fields. Know that earth's vibrational frequencies are rising, thereby affecting the dimensional field of your physical, electromagnetic, biological units and bodies as you call them. There is a shifting of high frequencies and vibrations towards a higher resonant field your earth is enveloped within this configuration, the effects of which come from your Sheshita Milky Way entering a sector specific of time and space that is of a higher vibrational frequency and of a different cosmic intelligence than the previous sector of time and space. Cosmic differentials act according to the cosmic and universal principles in that your earth is merging with a dimensional field adjacent to its proximity. Now, as I said, you have earth's dimensional field and then adjacent was another one that, that was always interfacing. The ships would come in, get resources and go back out. 
Now they colonized. Now there's colonization bases. And through the years, they withdrew the visibility. They've always been there, but they withdrew the visibility. And now that we are ready, you know, the fields are higher and our manifested dimension has dissolved. Okay? So I'm going to read it again. The cosmic differentials act according to the cosmic and universal principles in that your earth is merging with the dimensional field adjacent to its proximity. Earth is merging with an entirely different dimensional field. All who exist upon the earth and in your solar system and Sheshita will be experiencing shifts in consciousness and environments. The phasing of dimensional fields is taking place at this time and the Galactic Star Federation, the High Spiritual Council, and the star configuration con, uh, federation are present on all levels to assist in the transformation and merging of your dimensional field with the dimensional field adjacent. There's more activity and experiential occurrences of other galactic species. We welcome you, human humanity, Earthkin, as you are called, into a cosmic differential of dimensional fields. Earth has experienced what is occurring on your planet at other moments in time and space in the history. And they want to make a note that there is no time and space. Everything is present. And all of your planet, your human species, life forms are being affected. You will not be destroyed, but rather you are being reintegrated into the dimensional field adjacent to your Sheshita. How you experience this occurrence, occurrence is directly according to your original galactic expression your function, quality, and purpose during your initial manifestation from the Radiant One. So that's really important for you to, to recognize, you know, to get into who you are and why you're here. And here is a few other interpretations of this. So immediately I came back and I said, oh my gosh, you know, I see this all the time. I, I've been to the cities. We have the City of Light over San Francisco, there's, there's um, Agartha, there's, there's different forms, but, you know, are we ready? The veil between the worlds is lifting. Are we as a species ready for the future? And the technologies are amazing. We're going to go way beyond the 5G. We will not need microwave to continue working in the levels that we that we are. And I have to tell you, <clears throat> one, of the, um, one of the notations that they tell us about the uh, reverse ones is they have a tendency to want to control, take over. They play around in time machines and they want to understand, you know, the frequency of the mind and try to control the mind. This is one of the signatures of a reverse consciousness. And just so you know, I have been in the cities of light and they are magnificent, and there is no, uh, nothing is detrimental to the body. When I walk into the fields where the ships land, and you look at the landing, and you can go into a place where they've landed, and their anti-gravities lift off, but yet you look at the grasses that are there, and they're unharmed. And so you see piles of dirt, maybe the stones moving around a bit, but the living life that is attached to the earth is unharmed. And, and so recognizing that within myself, this was my experience that I saw that, that yes, they really care for us. Let me see, I'm going the other way. Oop. All right. Now, let me get back to my PowerPoint just to make sure that I'm on cue. And let me see here. We're going to keep going. So we are like the butterflies. And I'm going to get my PowerPoint here. We are like the chrysalis. In a chrysalis right now, it's, it's gooey, it's messy, it's difficult. Uh, and for those who are awake, they begin to reorganize ourselves. We are reorganizing ourselves, organizing ourselves, and we soon find ourselves breaking out 
of the cocoon as beautiful butterflies. This is where we're going. It's going to be, it is magnificent. Each and every one of you, the beauty and the grace. So I said, what, where do I go to understand, you know, what's going on, what, what you've shown me? So they told me to, to get into the Schumann resonance of the earth. And that is when the cosmic energies and the solar energies hit the earth and it, it rings, it makes the earth ring as a bell. And I guess they've measured this, you know. So you have the cosmic rays over on the left, the solar rays and the Schumann resonance, the ringing of the bell. These wavelengths go right through the body. And uh, this video, there's a video on heartmath.com where you can go to, but Alexander Javinsky, he discovered the effects of the cosmic solar activities and the Schumann resonance on soldiers during World War I. So I said, okay, let me take a look at this. So they took um, 16 women and they tracked them in 2018 just to see, uh, you know, as the cosmic rays and the solar rays shift, you know, how will that affect them? And so sure enough, five months later, you know, EKGs and all of this, they took readings. And what they found is that as the resonance changed, their lives changed, their moods changed, their emotions changed, their physiology changed. So there is this effect that's going on in the planet. And I think some of the changes in um, the environment are due to the shifts in the frequencies that are going on. And I want to take a look at this because this is the big question that the scientists are asking. And I'm, I'm now talking to scientists concerning the Schumann resonant. We're keeping up with it. And number one, uh, our resonant baseline of Earth is 7.3 hertz. So the Schumann resonance baseline is 7.83. It is now modulating from 76 to 110, coming back down to 60. So what we have there is um, this movement that we could see that the modulation, that the 7.83 is no more that our, our dimensional field as we know it is dissolved. And I think this is what they're speaking about is that the modulation is higher now, 76 Hertz from seven, that's quite a jump. And 5 million people meditated around the world and the scientists are trying to figure out, does our consciousness have an effect on the Schumann resonance? So that's the question we put out to all of you. And I think the answer is yes. And so, um, yeah, so then we have higher vibrational frequencies of the cosmic solar human affecting humanity, activating our nervous system and our consciousness. But is our consciousness and affecting the human resonance? That is the big question again. And I'm really excited, and um, we're going to keep up with this. We're going to keep looking at this. This brings on the sciences of electroceuticism, the electroceuticals, electromagnetic energy frequencies for healing. So I did a lot of work in radionics and working with uh, uh, neurological, um, neurosensory development, and with Dr. Downing, you know, uh, with the Lumatron. So that was photonic lights in the eyes. And um, th this enabled to readjust the hypothalamus. And so I had a lot of science in that in, in the early days. It wasn't well known working with radionics and that. And um, let's see, I'm just finding my little notes place to make sure that I give you everything. We're coming to a special, very special part Yes, frequencies, there we go. All right, we are the children of the Shishita, of the Milky Way. And so we take a breath and I wanna call forth your galactic self. And just step forward for a moment 
is the human, the divine, and the galactic. We are a holy trinity at the highest point. In the alchemical process, we are in the seventh degree of the alchemical process. Take a moment and recognize we have an opportunity to use our consciousness to evolve our planet, the planet we were on, the planet we are on. We can shift the tone of this planet to be illuminate and beautiful. And let's see, yes. Okay. And then just keep moving forward and recognize that each of you are galactic beings having a human experience. Look into the eyes of this beauty. Such respect, each of you. I look into your eyes. I spent 15 years as an optician looking into your eyes, your Holy Spirit, looking into the eyes of another. If you're there with someone, look into their eyes and recognize there's a very high consciousness there. And we're having a, a human experience, yeah. We're being guided to shift our consciousness. Compassion, sharing, caring, loving. Go into nature, walk on the ley lines, the power center. And we're looking here at the center of the earth. As you attune yourself to the planetary system, these portals will open to you, the inner earth. You will be guided to places in which, you know, an example, a beautiful doctor I was with, we, we, we went up to Middletown to the Buddha Canyon where the galactics are. And we had a starship that was driving with us, flying with us, escorting us all the way. We got there and the Stargate was open. Oh my goodness. As the Stargate was open, you know, and ships went in and out, and then it closed. Black Hawk helicopters appeared. Uh, it was like a little strange couple, you know, wanted to know what was going on. And we just shooed them away. This is private property. Excuse me, can't be here. But the doctor, his eyes, from being in the high frequency, began to see. He said, I see the buildings. I, I see what you're saying. He saw them. Now the portal opened for us to go through to the other side. I said, let's go. I wanted to take someone. I said, let's go through the gateless gate. He wasn't ready. It's fine. Are you ready? You know, people ask me about the inner earth. It does exist, but just like the Mari temples, the Mary Magdalene, Mari, Mother Mary, the Maris, these temples of Isis were interdimensional portals into another realm. And so I'm going to write a book about that because Mary Magdalene has been guiding me and, of course, my sister Aset Isis and understanding these portals. And so, again, portals are opening all over the planet. Here is the City of Light. Thank you, David, lightparty.com. Thank you, David, for your unrelenting vision of Alcatraz. Um, over top of this Bay Area is a beautiful city of light. You have only to attune yourself here and to understand. Here's Telos, my favorite. Mount Shasta, you know, here is an incredible awakening. Anybody who goes there and sees this, they would, you know, they know. They can't touch it, they can't see it, you know, it's a cloud, but still they know, and you know. So again, people think, oh, I'm going to walk into a cave and I'm going to be in the city under the earth. But really, it's about going into a dimensional field. Again, they didn't necessarily live in this dimension. They live in another dimension. I think you'll find that with the Yetis as well. So this was my first experience of the Galactics, Glory and the Light of the Radiant One. 
experience where the oil spill was occurring and had been going on for about two months from April to May. <clears throat> or eight, let's see, what was it? It started in April, and then by the end of April, going into May, the whole fleet appeared, and I took this picture. My daughter sent me a picture. She said, Mom, you know, this is her first alien ship. She couldn't believe it. And of course, you know, the burning in the oil. And there was really a necessity for them to step in and help humanity. So they hovered over my house for about three days. A ship was there and I came out and I said, you know, what can I do for you? And they said, gather as many humans. I said, oh my goodness, we're in trouble. Yeah. And so I did. And we started the Gathering of Light and Earth Ocean Ceremony. And that was the beginning, 7-11-2010, beginning. Here is another em emanation of the Starkin, the uh, High Spiritual Council. This was the day that they did the uh, silhouette of San Francisco. So on one side to the west was the silhouette being happening, and on the on the east was this huge colossal being formed and the sun's going down to the west but here it was in the center of this colossal cloud and everybody was just you know our hearts wide open there's nothing you can do there's there's not a difference between nature and the star beings you see and so in loving nature you love the star beings and in loving the star beings you love nature and they love nature forces and they know how to work with them as you can see And so I made this beautiful symbol. Uh, it's just a symbol to honor the High Spiritual Council. In the center, you'll see a mark of a ship. It's an actual ship. You'll see it in a moment. And here we are at the very center. Take a breath. Do you see the sun with the corona or do you see the eye of God? That is the question. Are you open to seeing the eye looking at you? As I tell people, keep your head to the sky for if you're looking for God, there you will find God. And here it is. Here's the intelligence. How can that be? And I know photographers who say, oh, they're ice crystals and you gotta put the camera a certain way, this and that. No. This is precision in the moment for you. I'm going to just, I need to ding. I need to hit it with a. Here again, I'm with Deborah Juicy. We traveled throughout France. We're at Lord's France, we did our prayers, you know, it's the place of the appearance of Mother uh, Mary, Isis. That was her last incarnation. And I began to see, you know, the modulation of the sky. There's always kind of a, a little note. And you can see the plasmic field shifting. And eventually the sky opened up. As the sky opened up, I looked up through the throne of God. I mean, I was on my knees, truly. And I saw the radiance. It was like a Greco painting or painting of all the angels and such, all the way up to the throne. So I give praise to this moment. This is the opening of an interdimensional portal. Again, here is the skyscape. And I would always see the square cloud, that, that, that's my signal. We're here, they always let me know if they have to do cloaking. And you're seeing more and more that they do not have to cloak. And uh, what's going on with the Navy, allowing people to see, it's just beautiful. But in truth, you know, I thought for a minute, I, I have to have these perfectly, you know, image things so people can see. Here's a, a, a beautiful command ship here, cloaked. I'm with my beautiful sister, Marlena. We're on New Year's Day, 2019. It was beautiful. The square and the pyramid together. Yeah. Unreal. Also, 
here's a small orb. You know, you could see the, the dimensions of the ship. It's not a blur. You know, that you could see it's metallic in, in nature. So I'm bringing out my home movies, home videos, home pictures. This is the beginning of a Stargate that opens. I was in uh, San Rafael when I started. It's a 40 minute trip to Santa Rosa. And this began to appear in the sky. This was midway through. I had to stop my car. You can see my thumb in the camera there at the top. And as we got to Santa Rosa, I started seeing the movement, uh, and I have it in video, kind of a rainbow essence, but you can actually see it was propulsion of some sort pushing. And I said, okay, this is total evidence of another dimensional field interacting with our field. And so I took a close up on this. Sometimes they just give me technology. They want to show, they want you to know, you know, they, they really want you to know, they need you to know that they're here, that it's happening. And when you're ready, you see it. If you don't, you don't. I was blessed that another young lady who I, I was working and her daughter took this exact photograph. You see the blue orb coming out of the center of the stargate. This is a true stargate. You could see the sun in the back. The sun is vertical. Stargate is horizontal. So there you have it. And so, again, beautiful Claudette took this picture of me gazing into the amazing <laughs> nature formations that they give us right at dusk at Skywatch. And here we're taking pictures of orbs. Now I'm putting some that are blurred there because um, I've been to some of the talks and, and you know, you could see that the, the center light is green, it's not white, you know? And so this is a signaling. They do, they do what is called uh, light sequencing. And when they get excited and they start communicating, so it's very much like contact, you know, they use light sequencing. This is a command ship. You can see the two, the two lights on the wings, but you also see the two that are together just before the forward uh, light. They use terrestrial ships. They don't, the Galactic Star Federation does not need uh, anti-gravity, you know, uh, or I won't say anti-gravity. I'll say they do not need galaxy ships to traverse the earth plane. And so this is um, as it flew over San Francisco Bay Area. I want to talk about the cosmic mysteries. Archangel Michael came in a blazing light of gold, spoke clearly to me. And here's another one we took up in the high mountains of Willits. It was probably about a hundred of us got to see this beautiful being. I thought it was like Red Tara, you know, such a beautiful being. Stay with us quite a while. Some of the uh, immortals that I've been with, Yeshi Sojo, and she obtained supreme anthropos. She became complete in her humanness. Meso, Keeper of the Books, I channeled Chiron and um, uh, Metatron and, and some of the really high ones that were so high that my body was just vibrating when I came back in and transmediumship. Tylee Poe and Babaji, Mir Babaji. Yeah, it's exciting. Also, you know, we have to acknowledge the fairy world and the praying mantis, the Andromedans, you know, it totally, there's no place in nature of this intelligence. You have to really just kind of open your field. Look at how beautiful she is. This is a beautiful praying mantis and Andromedan. And you know, they could be in their animal form, their, their, their creator, creature form, and then poof, you know, they can change, you know, their shapeshifters that are among us, right? Avalokiteshvara, Duval, who is like the Dalai Lama. He comes in the form of Dalai Lama, the aspect. My sister, Aset. Thoth, our father, whom I call Ajwa. You call Hermes or Thoth. Mary Magdalene, strong in the world, helping to bring the, the, the they're of the doves, you know, this, this grouping that I saw at Lord's Friends that she was a part of guiding me there. We did crystalline energies all through the ley lines, activating crystals and putting them in the earth. 
And what I saw was that they are passing the baton to us. And she's saying, okay, we've done our work for 2,500 years. What are you going to do? They're passing the baton. Do you accept that? Can you create things for humanity that will last 2,500 years? That is really for us to step into that and continue the lineage of Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, Isis, Aset, Thoth, and Avalokiteshvara. What are we going to offer? And of course, Pele, let us not forget our Hawaiian relatives. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to see how much time we have. We have a little bit of time, and then we're going to go question and answer. Um, let me go back to this. Uh, I had asked for a particular offering to humanity, and the Star Confederation sent me a being in a fireball coming through the atmosphere. Usually they're just traversing the Earth's atmosphere, not coming in from a galaxy. And I took a picture of it, and it opened itself up, and there was the Merkaba. This is a real embodiment. And I show you the, the alignment of the Galactic Star Federations, the starships, at a dinner with Michaela and Todd in, over here in Oakland Hills. And they came one and two and three, and people were like, what's going on there? And, and we had a full sky watch at the dinner, and her mother was there, and we had a blast, and they just loved me. There's a connection now that I have that it goes beyond grace, and, you know, Terry Biggio and, and uh, you know, Richard, we're all just looking as the command ship went right over us and they really performed they, they really gave their love to us so it is a loving experience i welcome all of you to walk the path and get in touch with me if you need and uh, get the book it's on amazon uh, the galactic earth council reintegration of earthkin and starkin um, yeah. enjoy the readings of the advanced galactic members there's photographs for you, and of course, chapter 11. Get your go session, right? And here's the keys to the journey. Evolve your consciousness. Go through the gateways. Live in the new cos cosmic di di dimensional field. Live in a new cosmic dimensional field. And the reintegration has begun. Earthkin and Starkin are one. And the ultimate goal is unified field. With that, um, we have writings and newsletters, uh, the Galactic Origin, Go Sessions, Celestial Activations. You can even chat with me. I have time for people to talk with me briefly and hundreds of people around the world and uh, call me for any lectures and workshops. Again, I want to thank you all. We're going to take some time for some questions and answers. Um, and uh, you can text... Uh, galactic, uh, you can collect uh, galactic to 228 So galactic, and you text it to the number 22828, and that will connect you straight into our website or go to galacticearthcouncil.com. All right, so there you have it. I'm going to stop my um, PowerPoint. And we're going to go into some questions and answers. And uh, let's see, we have 17 minutes. And let's see here. I'm going to, I need my glasses on to read what's going on here. And um, so let's see, Lynn Ann, I'm going to go to you. Okay, let's see. Ah. Uh, Okay, what does Lynn Ann tell me? Okay. Someone is telling how happy they are that they came. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can roll this. Why did the reverse consciousness happen? Okay, I can answer that one. Okay, let me go up here and see if there's any. I'm going to answer that one right away. Okay. Let's talk about the Galactic Earth Council. Um, 
the reverse ones. Okay, so as we said before, um, the reversed ones, the first occurrence was during the destructive period on Earth when the whole of the Milky Way moved into a sector of time and space that was a lower frequency. So the whole galaxy crashed. Uh, it was very destructive because it caused planetary shifts, planets ran into each other, they went out of their orbits, you now have the astral belt. Um, the one continent that we had on this planet broke into six pieces at that time. Those that were on the planet in the greening area that were in the third dimensional field greening area, their consciousness reversed. Now you have to think of, if you go to some of the lower city vibes and you're in a place where you say, gee, I better lock my car six times. Um, I'll give you an example. I was in a place in Baltimore where there was like 14 locks on my aunt's door. So when you're in places that are filled with um, the reverseness of reality, then it is all about, you know, the survival of the fittest, you know, what do I own? A lot of the gang related stuff is reverse consciousness. So some of the healing properties, some of the ways the antidote, as I spoke of, was to work with raising the frequencies. And the sophiglio tones are very helpful in that, understanding the harmonics of sound. And we have a lot of practitioners, sound practitioners that are happening now that help with that. And it can help heal the mind. You know, when they say, um, and I know I went into a state of acute stress for a time, and what ended up was I had to go in the forest or, or I had to listen to music and the sound of music calmed my soul and de-stressed me. And then I learned about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. So I'm just going to answer that like that. So we still have, you know, not everybody was healed, but we, we, we have uh, what they tell us is this complex of reversed ones is like a grain of sand one grain of sand on a beautiful pure beach of white sand so put it in proportion it's not the big takeover scene that they put out there by no means can the reverse ones uh, go against the ultimate uh, supreme forces and if the consciousness of the radiant one wants to shut it down it will shut it down as you know in a hurricane or anything like that, when these supreme forces come through, <laughs> everybody watches out, right? So um, they're not in control. One of the things that I do know is that the crop circles, I can share with you, the crop circles are kind of indicators, not only of time travel of people, but also to let you know that the grid, because Avebury in that area is where the, the, the umbilical cord of earth comes into Avebury in that area. So when you have the crop circles, it shares with you that uh, the planet is being held by the highest. And I want to say, you know, who owns the, the who owns the, um, the the earth is who is in charge of the group, the grid. So the electromagnetic grid is the group mind. So if we unconsciously stick uh, satellites and we continue like Elon Musk put a whole string of satellites up there it's doing inter interference pro pro interference to the um, mental consciousness that we normally have and to override that we just go to nature and be among the trees and we'll still get the same information so even though they think they can block it it, it doesn't happen Okay, so ever since I woke up, I have asked for help from my higher self and guides and been frustrated to not hear back. We came here with a wiped out memory and no instructions on how to get to level, uh, to the level many speak of. I have many physical issues against me that hinder my advancement. I contacted, I contracted for all of what I'm dealing with, uh, question mark. Where are the healing technologies we don't have access to? Where is the help? How precious, Glenn. The help is here. Don't worry. There are, you know, just give me 
connect with me through galacticearthcouncil.com and uh, you know, just send me an email, galacticearthcouncil at gmail.com and you and I will have a talk about that. Um, it, it starts out very simply to resonate a thought in your mind and recognize where did that thought come from. You have to understand where your thoughts come from before you can understand receiving thoughts or the cyberspace that is affecting us. This is, you know, um, early spirituality 101. Once you understand where your voice comes from, where you're hearing that sound, then you can allow information to flow through and you kind of have a directional place that you're always kind of hearing things coming in from. Yeah. So I tell people to just focus their mind on the North Star and just bring one light ray of the North Star. It was shown this by the immortals. Bring one ray into the, into the mind and let it open up the circuitry. It will actually, you'll see a light, your whole mind will light up. The visual cortex, the hypothalamus, the cerebral, the frontal, all of that, and it goes down the brainstem, okay? Anchor it in the sacrum. But as you do that, you're bringing in your divinity. Anchor it in the heart and breathe. And from the heart, really have a sincere request that the highest and most beneficial just send you a feeling of love. So there's a little way that we can work with you, Glenn, and you know, hope is not ending. And certainly we have electromagnetic you know, equipment that can help you to modulate. And also looking at the contracts that you had and why you shut yourself down. It's all perfect. Perfect timing. When is the next Skywatch? Well, Jill, um, we're going to have the anniversary in July. Um, no plans for New Mexico at this time, but you can have me come and I can help do trainings with you there. Um, it's easier to, for me to be on the ground with you all. So um, I'm here in the Northern Bay area and sometimes they have me go to um, closer to San Francisco and sometimes up in the hills here. But the main thing is they take me to places where there are no aerial traffic. So it's not like San Francisco airport where you have to discern between what is an airplane and what is not. Because if you're just new getting out there and I say, oh, that is a you know, galactic ship. Most people don't get it. They say, no, no, no. You know. So they have to do a thing. And I love um, the Galactic Star Federation. They create holograms of, of, of airplanes and you're looking at it and all of a sudden the wing is gone. The wing comes back. The wing is gone. The wing comes back. It splits in two, three, four, comes back and one. And they do this over and over and over until the person goes, oh my God, that's not a plane, you know? So uh, you don't know if you're looking at holograms, you have to really tune in. And once you get the tune in messages, then, then you get to know, um, you, you get familiar. It's taken me, you know, 40 years. Uh, so Jill, what do you know about the area around which, where the set off of a nuke, yes, I'm being called to go there for an activation. You know, that's very interesting what you're saying, my dear. Um, let me just take a moment with that. You know, uh, you know, what they're telling me is rather than the activation is, is a healing, you know, because this this was point zero in in which these these nuclear bombs went off and really tore the sky in half. I mean, for weeks. I mean, it snowed on one side of the house and not on the other. And so um, it doesn't need any further activating. You know, there, it, 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 it's in a state of reverberance. And so what I would say is gently place something green to honor that area if you wanted to do. I, I would caution against going there and trying to do activations because it's already activated to the point of, you know, reverberation. So think about that as I'm speaking to you because they're channeling through and they're saying more to bring green, green energy for balance and stabilization. Pyramids, you can place a pyramid of stones. You can place a, a, an outline of stones of pyramids. 
um, maybe imprint crystals with very high vibrational thoughts of love and healing um, to heal the atmosphere, to heal the, the membrane of our, 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 our um, uh, universal matrix, you know, something like that. So I would say it's, it's, it's so activated, it's, it's crazy. Um, let's see. I'm glad everybody uh, is moving over to the question section. Okay, let me start at the top. Um, so yeah, the next Sky Watch will be an advance. And then I'm looking at if there's enough people that are interested, I will do an open Sky Watch for those that are new. Um, so Janine, I've been confirmed. I'm a Blu-ray, a spark of life from Source. I've been activated slowly since night. November 2019. Different gifts starting. Question, does it help to connect with other Blu-rays to help further bring my purpose for humanity? That's a beautiful question and thank you very much. Um, you have to feel it in your heart. Uh, you know, there's a disconnect, what I hear, uh, between yourself and other Blu-rays. And, you know, that's your kin. And so generally when I do the Galactic um, Go session, a Galactic Origin session, there is an emotional connection in being back with your kin or having that, um, that knowledge, not just knowing that they're there. Oh, should I connect with them? You know, there's a whole... Uh, there's a whole uh, familia uh, of knowing that they're there and there's purposeful and there's a reason why you would come back together. And also to understanding your purpose wouldn't necessarily come from connecting with them, but rather connecting inwardly to yourself and looking at your contract, your mission and agreement and how you came here in the first place. Did you come in a ship through a teleport? You know, those kind of things. So that's how I would answer that question for you. Um, let's see. Let's keep going down. Mm -hmm. Hi, Perry. That's one of our advanced. We have Perry Vinegar. Um, how is our shift in Earth frequency affecting the Axis Monday? And do we have any tools to help our dreams and meditations to travel these worlds? <clears throat> so, to me, the, you know, the the, the Axis Monday that you know that's like the axis of the world. Um, uh, let me just go in on that. They're telling me the answer is yes. That there is a shift in the rotational field of the of the Earth, the axis Monday, but um, it's in exact uh, equivalent to the frequencies that is moving, that is rising. So there's uh, almost like a scientific formula of movement between the rising frequency the modulation of the earth moving into a new dimension and the the um, uh, the turning of the earth itself. When the atomic bombs went off, you know, the earth went off degrees, 17 degrees. It's not going to be like that. There's not going to be like a shifting off axis or, you know, as I said, earth is not going to be destroyed. Uh, rather, if you're sitting in your living room, and the wall suddenly dissolved and now you're sitting outside in the street. You see, you know, some places in Hawaii, they, they build their houses without walls. And, you know, you're feeling the outer edges of a new world and that's where it is. It's more like an expansive outward. And so that movement and that rotation is in direct, e e directly equal to the rising of the frequencies and the laws and the, the principles that are in the new frequency. So you have to think there's a whole science that's going to be coming online for humanity. Okay. So that's what I would say, Perry. I love you and thank you for being an advanced member. Yay. And uh, thank you, Joe. You're in, in Miami. And thank you, Spaceport USA. But you are confirming something. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, so I think we've come to uh, the end. Let me just double check here. 
everything is good and I will look forward to answering your emails and connecting with you uh, uh, at galacticerscouncil.com. I so appreciate you all and I love you and thank you Neil Gar. you are magnificent. Thank you for this opportunity to speak into your portal to ascension. It is so needed and so powerful for humanity. On behalf of the High Spiritual Council, the Galactic Star Federation, and the Star Confederation as Star Command, this is Celestine Star saying thank you. Thank you.